Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Hashtag Ask Rob Co. Hope you're all well, hope you had a good and safe Easter. Welcome back to the Wednesday show with James Wilde. How are you doing, James? Yeah, really good, thanks, Rob. How are you? Yeah, really good. Uh, one week back into football, believe it or not, I've managed to get in four matches in the last in the last nine days. So uh, very, very uh, happy with that. And uh, you know, what I've noticed in the office at the moment is we're in town, for everyone listening, Tottenham Court Road, uh, Euston area, and it's, it is busier and busier every day. Things are opening up. There's this activity. All the shops are pre- preparing for the Monday reopening. And there's a, there's a buzz in the air. You know, the, the restaurants and the bars are opening next week. Shops are opening next week. And the numbers in terms of the COVID position um, um, seem to be um, going in the right direction. That's a down, downward trend. And all things suggest that the market, the economy, retail, high street, business industry is moving to an opening on Monday coming and everyone's getting prepared and ready for that. Um, you know, that's what we're seeing every day. And I think that buzz, you know, I know we have a lot of people in Guernsey, Jersey, Isle of Man, Gibraltar, Switzerland, a- Asia, Far East, you know, wherever people are listening to. We're on the ground in town. I'm coming into the office every day, doing our inspections every day. And the activity levels are are ramping up now. And I think that's a good indicator. We really need to see that one. Okay, so let's go straight into the intel. Um, If I didn't wish everyone a happy Easter or if they had one, and and enjoying uh, being back at work, if people are back in work, and if they're looking after the kids in half term, really challenging and uh, super empathetic on that one. Okay, so let's go into the handout for this week. We've got some interesting data this week, actually. Um, handout is handout number one on the right-hand side, as always. Looking at the numbers, the new instruction numbers and the sales numbers saw a a steep decline. Now, whether that's um, Easter coming in or people preparing for Easter or a slowdown or some other things, all we can see with the data very clearly is the new instructions levels, uh, week 13, 233, massively down on on the previous mid-300 figures. So that's a really key indicator. And then the sold numbers are showing a similar fall um, to 143, where we've been consistently four or five weeks in a row over and above 200. So I think this is key data for everyone out there and key information. And it, it, it's going to be an interesting one to watch. I, I want to hear your view, James, because my expectations were that I think with the budget coming in, we kind of like thought there was going to be a crossover in deals getting done before the end of the month and then a slowdown and then Easter and things coming back. And I wasn't quite sure whether the crossover would be enough for numbers to carry on or whether we were going to see a decline. What What's your view on these numbers? Because, you know, I suppose the falls in new instructions and, and sold property, that's really quite, you know, quite a big decline in the last week. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Um, so I think we were slightly surprised by the new instructions dropping off in the past week. Um, difficult to say, but I, I'm sort of viewing that as a bit of a, a blip, a one-off. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see next week how those recover, uh, when those resume to the sort of late 300s, which we've been seeing for the last month or so. In terms of the sold data, the sold properties and transactions we've seen in the last week, this has seen quite a dramatic fall uh, down from the early 200s down to 143 in the past week. Um, I have a I have a bit of a theory about this that this could be uh, the fall off uh, from the market closing for those two to three weeks over the festive period. Um, obviously, we've brought you news of it 
at the end of last year that the search times were that sort of two to three month period and there really wasn't any sort of movement in that from the local authorities as they had staff furloughed and reduced working uh, working hours and working protocols um, due to COVID. Um, so I think that could be uh, the, the first of a two to three week period of a bit of a slowdown on the sold sold uh, sold uh, numbers on the volume of transactions. So I'm expecting that to be a similar level for the next two to three weeks uh, until it starts to pick up those sales which we've been seeing uh, from the sort of second, third week in January when the market really uh, starts to gain a bit more momentum after the festive festive break. I don't know if you're, what your thoughts are on that theory, Rob. So it, it's just interesting that both the declines have happened on the same Week and obviously your sold pipeline is historic. And remember, we were saying that your deal flow would have been around 12, 13 weeks, and historic historic timelines were six to eight. And our conveyances that we work with very closely were explaining why that's been pushed out. So the sold figures can only relate to a historic point in time like you've just mentioned, maybe the Christmas period and the New Year period in deep lockdown. So there's a bit of logic why it may have tapered off for a short period. And then the new instructions, that's live. And the new instructions, we could maybe put down to the week before Easter and next week's numbers will be this Easter week and the bank holidays. So Again, if it's down to Easter and, and people being off or preparing for the holiday break, does that mean next week's numbers are going to be low as well? Because obviously we've just got back and we haven't seen what those numbers look like yet either. Um, so I, that could be a two-week thing. So we could yeah. be instructions down and low for a two-week period and the sold figures for that blip and that period, what you're saying is Christmas, New Year's, and then the first week or two in January, the deep lockdown, we're going to see this little decline. And then market activity that we know is very vibrant because I spent yesterday speaking to um, all of the industry key figures that we work with um, from brokers, from mortgage providers to estate agents to conveyances and legals and then the main bank suppliers um, that we work with and everything from all of those areas was a, a positive story and that April is going to be a really good month and they're expecting that May, June, July are really going to be strong rebound months and the industry is going to go from strength to strength from a lending perspective and a property um, perspective in terms of acquisitions. So, you know, just to break down for us as a business at the moment, and you know, the room and the audience is made up of uh, high street retail lenders, so the, the big volume lenders in the country, private banks, some large, some boutique, challenger banks that are, are really big and doing their specialist products, whether it's your buy to let your HMOs or your res residential developments or your light heavy refurbs, or whatever projects they are. And then there's the bridging and the commercial areas. Now for us, we're seeing an uptick across all areas. So because we focus on our specialisms and yes, we work a lot with private banks and prime super prime. Yes, we work with volume instructions across the whole country, the retail main lenders. And we do a lot with specialist challenging challenger banks with their specialist products, um, namely HMO, buy to lets and some other areas. And we work with some really good bridges out there who, who are performing at the moment. So all in all, and then the commercial piece, we're getting more and more instructions from our commercial panels every week as that market rebounds. So from our perspective, and we're, we're this live feed, live intel, which is what we're sharing with you every week, we are definitely seeing that in all the areas now, an uptick 
of volume. And we expect that to continue week after week after week now. And nothing that we're seeing with our volume and nothing that all those stakeholders that I just mentioned have told me in the conversations that I've been having and um, is telling us any different, although yeah. this week's data um, isn't a perfect reflection of, of the message I'm giving you there. Anything you want to add on that, James? Well, just going back to the data again, Rob, on the instructions data, we obviously had the Easter break and bank holiday, and we've obviously got sort of the days either side of that creating a two short week. So it could be, um, you know, a one, two or three week, uh, just sort of slight drop off in those numbers. Um, and then obviously when the market starts to fully open, we are expecting new instructions to increase, uh, which in the coming weeks after hopefully will um then filter through to increase sales. The last point on the data, if we go to the monthly sales, and you know we always look at our two, three, five, 10 million sweet spot just for the prime, super prime, private banking, upper tier market space. And those numbers, you know, they speak for themselves. The, the 160, 83, 36, 8, 29th of March, so literally you've got your March figures, and they demonstrate how strong and robust that part of the residential market is. Um, yes, Mar March is a, a five-week month, so um, expectations would be that the numbers would be um, improved on, on, on maybe your January and your Februarys, but those numbers are very strong. And just purely comparing um, the previous months shows the robustness of that space and the volume of work that we're doing in upper tier and prime, super prime lending. That's not holding back. So I know there's markets within markets, but the data that we strip down for that second part here on the two, three, five, 10 million, I think is a really positive indicator of what we should be expecting in the weeks and months um, moving forward because that space is performing exceedingly well, even if it's not seeing the price increase in terms of the percentage increase in, in the values, in terms of volume of transaction, um, they are seeing increases. And as we discussed last week, the four to five bedroom detached, semi-detached in that space is performing extremely well. So that data there is really clear. We're seeing that the volume of instructions in that specialist area is, is, is really good, really strong and performing extremely well. What else, James, have you got for us or what else do you want to add? Well, just following on, obviously, Rob, from um, the, the prime central London, um, obviously, reported it 2020 it was a record year uh, with a record number of uh, 10 million plus property selling. Um, in the last uh, couple of days, there has been news of a uh, Saudi prince selling his Cotswold estate, um, obviously in Gloucestershire, for £120 million. Pounds. Absolutely staggering sale for, for a country property outside of London. Um, just to bring you some headline details on that deal, the sale includes the estate, uh, which is the uh, Glimpton House, as well as 39 cottages, um, a Norman church, 167 acres of parkland with a further 500 acres. Uh, the seller of that was the Prince, uh, Prince Bandar, uh, Saudi uh, royal figure, um, having sold the estate to the uh, King Hamad of Bahrain and also his son, uh, Prince Salman. Um, I mean, a, a, a real record deal in terms of country, in the country house market there. Um, something that goes well over and beyond the sort of typical prime sector of that market. Yeah, I think, listen, not as strong as that specific sale, but we've seen some good interest in the country home market and um, the country estate market. What you find normally that product is semi-liquid because the de demand and supply equilibrium doesn't entirely work as fluidly and as fluid fluently as we would be looking for. So those deals are broadly speaking are very much one-offs. And 
the country estate stuff can stick around for years or you can then get a nice moment in the market where there's a bit of buoyancy and have a good transaction. So it's, again, very specialist area, very, very market knowledge intense in the sense that you know we cover a big part of that market and we've got great intel on it. Um, but historically, it's the space where the liquidity on such assets is challenging. So I, I, I always like to caveat that on that type of transaction in the country estate market. You know, it's very, very unique to individuals wanting certain estates with certain land, with certain facilities in certain locations. And once you've round did down all those key variables and parameters, you're not going to have a volume of buyers for each asset, um, which is why it's perceived as a, a relatively uh, high risk market from a lending perspective, which is why most lenders that would lend on a product like that would always cap their LTV coverage as a risk mechanism to protect from what can sometimes see some steep declines in value um, because of the liquidity point. So um, great, great deal there and great data and great intel. Have yet everyone be aware of that market's a very specialist area. What else have you got for us today in our catch up? Well, yeah, following on from that trophy asset sale, uh, just in terms of the um so lending market, a uh, quick note that holiday let mortgage availability has has increased dramatically over the last six to six to nine months. It's actually doubled uh, in terms of the availability of products since August 2020. Um, just to bring you some data on that, there's now 149 products available on the market. Uh, it's up from 103 in October 2020, uh, and it's obviously uh, doubled since there were 74 products available in August. August 2020. I mean, the U the UK. Uh, it's obviously the last 12 months. There's been that uh, travel, international travel restrictions placed on the whole country, which has, I think, driven demand for domestic UK holidays. And you know, maybe that's the market just re reacting to some of those changes uh, in a positive fashion. I believe. I think that's a really key point, and I was discussing this the other day. The fact that the government in their announcement didn't or weren't forthcoming with the travel arrangement will further drive that area of the market. So now people are thinking maybe they won't get away or maybe they won't get away to the destinations that they'd prefer to get away to. So it's going to even further drive that space for 2021 because now you're going to have great demand, probably more demand than supply in that area. Thus, all the bookings are going to get made now for your May, your June, your July, your August, all the way through. And you're going to see a really special, I was going to say one off year, but maybe two off because of last summer's uh, position as well. So I think yeah. that's a really good area. And some of the specialist lenders that we work with have done really well to get a product to the market in some of those areas and be quick um, to nuance out their offering and servicing. And I think where you're a lender, but you're so flexible in your product and pricing and you understand what's performing well and what's not performing well or what's about to return and you're able to um, manage your product and be agile and fast to the market, it's times like now where there's really good opportunity. And I think some of the lenders we work really closely with have really performed exceedingly well over the last 12 months, purely because they're so live with what's going on in the marketplace. And they're so into every detail in terms of their risk, pricing, product, exposure. They're then able to bring new product to the market and trial test and see where it goes. And I think for the, the proactive lender, whether you're a challenger, a bridger, even your high street or private banking boutique or your commercial lender, if you really understand what your product is and what your risk profile looks like on, on your current 
historical book and the new lending you're doing, the opportunities are going to be now. The market's opening up now. There's no question about that. I fully expect in all the areas that we've mentioned um, to rebound in the coming months where confidence and market sentiment is going to return. And it's all going to be about you as a lender um, having the right product to facilitate your sales divisions and teams to um, perform well in 2021 and have a really good year. I don't think there's anything stopping the year from a lending and sales perspective for being really positive because always the challenging months of the year are uh, January and February, and we've got through those months. They're always challenging, hard-performing months. We've now got through March, which was a good month. Performance-wise, across the board, was a good month. We've got through Easter. We're getting through virtually through COVID, virtually through the lockdowns. There should be nothing that should stop the rest of the year being a high-performing year. And, and I very much hope the data we bring you in the next three, four, five, six, and two, three, three, four, five, six weeks, and two, three, four, five, six months of this year supports what we are telling you and what uh, we are bringing you. Because I am a strong believer that we are about to see a very positive rebound in all of our areas. Anything else to close yeah. out for? Today, James. Well, just to further highlight that point, obviously the market leading platform for holiday and short term lets, Airbnb. I don't know if you've tried to book anything, Rob, but that is uh, pretty barren uh, in certain holiday holiday makers, towns uh, and cities across the across the UK. Um, just a further point, obviously, today the UK has started its rollout of the third uh, COVID vaccine, uh, which we're in introducing, uh, the Moderna vaccine, which has been rolled out today in Wales. Uh, this hopefully brings us some more positivity in terms of uh, further boosting our vaccine numbers, uh, which is ultimately going to lead to the unlocking uh, of the economy and the tiered restrictions which we've seen for the last 12 months. Yeah. All good and all positive. And just to close out for today, um, I just want to reiterate the previous point. I did see this morning that um, I think it was uh, Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan, saying he expected a boom uh, rebound in the US uh, economy built on consumer spending and confidence and sentiments and job growth. And, and actually, I think the UK economy has the opportunity to follow exactly the same path path of BM, huge consumer spending and built on the back of record savings in, in, in people's accounts and the positivity and the sentiment of the freedom factor of being out of lockdown and the vaccine process going so well and the numbers being so low is going to drive good economic activity uh, across all areas. So um, really happy to be back after Easter. The stats this week haven't been great. Um, I'm still very positive um, that the fundamentals are right for everyone in, in lending and funding and property to have a, a good performance year. And we're going to be with you all the way on that journey every week. Hashtag Ask Rob Co. Thank you for all your support across all the platforms, as I always say. Thank you for all your questions. Thank you for keep uh, joining every week. And we are here to help you, help your teams and keep supporting you. Thanks, James. And we will see everyone same time, same place next week. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Thanks.